five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, gentlemen. We are at the postseason. And uh, with me, I have last year's champion, 21 Reasons, Mr. James Helm himself. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. Tis the season. Hope everybody's enjoying their holiday so far. I know I am, being that uh, I'm still still playing for what's left of the season. Congratulations on behalf of uh, the other ten owners that have well, <laughs> great owners that aren't playing for anything. <laughs> well, it's been it's been a very hectic year, hectic season for me. I know. Um, I had a few guys that were my my base, and then I was playing the fucking waiver wire two or three guys every single week oh yeah i think that was definitely the key for me this year making it this far uh but also congrats to uh mr hayden wallace making it back uh to the championship game um i know it's been a he he won what two three years ago yeah um so basically me and him has been me or him has been in the finals i think the past four years maybe years um, I won the past two. He won the one before that, and then I won the one before he won. So, Mayor Hayden's pretty much have won uh, the past three years. It's been Mayor Hayden. Well, on behalf of the other ten owners in the league, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, I'm glad yeah. someone else is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, uh, maybe next year, Mayor y'all can knock Mayor Hayden off. And... But we're always in the same division, which is just. Right. I mean, every year it's me and him in the same division. It's completely random, too, so. Yep. Yeah, you remember. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to it. It actually looks like it's going to be a, just on the projections. And beyond that, just my personal opinion, it's, I, I predict a very close uh, game. Well, I think you're right. I hope you're wrong. I hope I <laughs> smoke him like I did Will. Uh Mr. Mr. Will leaving Tyler Lockett and Drew Brees on his bench. Yeah. It was 127 points. I don't, dude, you, you put up so many points. I don't even think that would have mattered. No, I, still, I think he looked at it, actually. He told me he, I still would have won by, like, 17 points. Yeah. You, you went off. So. Yeah. I had, it was either four or five guys all hit their bonuses. It was pretty crazy. Uh, but let's... Uh, Let's keep it rolling. We're going to move on to the Sacco Bowl, which I was there last year. Um, so you and Nelson. Yep. It just it, it goes to show you that even if you are there this year, don't worry about it. You can definitely make it back next year. It's a fresh slate every year. So uh, we've got Joey and Sean in the Sacco Bowl this year. Um, Mr. Mr. Saunders himself of the famed Sean Saunders Report. He said uh, he's he hasn't really been uh, playing since like week six or something. He's he's sitting at two and eleven. So, what, what do you think is that is that an excuse or or is he actually just not been active? I don't think he's been active, but he's definitely active this week because I don't see any inactive players um, in his lineup. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so I guess he kind of midway through the season realized the curse is real. There's no point in even fighting it. And, uh, he just he threw up the white flag, and now he's, uh, I guess he's trying um, or scrambling um, to not come in last place. Uh, so, yeah, um, he's definitely has not been as active as he was in years past. I, I will admit that. Oh yeah, uh, I, I agree. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot from him. Uh, you know, on the way, like I said, I was chugging through the waivers every week, so. Uh, I think I picked up a few more guys than I normally would have. Um, but that being said, uh, it's got to be rough handling the curse and then still trying to get to the playoffs, which he, he usually does. Uh, so this year, you know, if he can manage to get himself out of that hole at 2-11 and, and actually not end up having to pay double, um, that's kind of impressive, I guess, you know. But, on the other side of the coin, we have Joey, our first time uh, owner this year, sitting in the Sacco Bowl. So, 
I know it's a lot to take in. I know I didn't do great my first year either. Uh, There's definitely a learning curve, especially in our league, I feel like. Because uh, you can't really hop on ESPN.com or NFL.com and go look what everybody else is saying. It don't work for our league. You really have to understand our scoring system and how it relates to the players. Yep. So, uh, just... We'll take a quick look at uh, both of their teams, uh, just just to kind of go over, you know, their players, their matchups, whatever, so we can get a prediction out of it. Uh, let's see. So on Joey's team, uh, he has Brandon Cooks. That's that's about the only number one player I really see. Uh, he has Isaiah Crowell and Fitzgerald, too. Those are obviously good players. They they haven't been living up to everything. Um, and right now, it looks like he's he's got Blake Bortles in over Tyrod Taylor. I think I'd... Uh, I don't know. That's rough. I mean, I don't know who you would call right there <laughs> between those two. Uh, on the other side of it, though, Sean is sitting with Kirk Cousins, Doug Martin... Dontrell Inman and Randall Cobb. It's all, you know, and Sterling Shepard. Potentially all players that can hit bonuses. Uh, but you see the predictions uh, from NFL.com anyway shows Joey winning by over 30 points. Yeah. So what so what do you think? Um, I actually like Sean's lineup better, but, uh, well, on paper, I guess, but uh, I kind of, I'm with the NFL experts, uh, Joey's going to pull out the upset uh, because even though they're predicting him to win uh, on paper, Sean's got the better team. He's got uh, the better quarterback, the better running backs, the better, definitely the better receiving core. Um, I guess I would have to give Joey the edge on, on the tight end position, but it's saying Eifert didn't practice today. Uh, right. And Kyle Rudolph is solid. Um, and then their, their flexes are both just, Shots, shots start. Um, I mean, Sean, Sean's running a tight end in his flex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, got their defenses. Uh, I would probably give the edge to. Nah, hang on. I don't know. Their defense are both pretty bad. Um, yeah, I guess that's the reason they're both in the soccer ball. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, fair. Um, know, Joey, he's going to. Um, like I said, I, I don't. I, you would think, just looking at the players on offense, you would think that the prediction would be Sean would win by thirty points. But um, right. I'm gonna ruin Joey. Uh, Dan Bailey is gonna win it for him on Monday night. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I, I hope so. I hope it, it drags right to to Monday. Yep. Uh, because I'm not in there. I hate that shit when that happens to me. But um, I think I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go with the cursed one. Um, like you said, his his team just looks better on paper. Um, yeah, I, I definitely as long as he pays attention and he makes sure that you know none of the players get injured, you know, during the week or anything like that. I think if if he's actually paying attention, uh, I think he'll pull it out. Yeah, there's there's just there's there's definitely more firepower on his side. There's definitely more probability on his side. But you never know. Rocky Balboa comes storming up those steps and Joey might take it. Joey upset me week one of the season, so Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true too. Well, uh good luck to both of them. I guess we'll find out uh on Monday, hopefully. All right, let's move on uh, past the Sacco Bowl to a very special segment called the Sean Saunders Report Final Grades. Okay, uh, so I I'm still. I still have the notes I took at the start of the season for the very first episode I did this year uh, when Sean actually gave draft grades and predicted uh everybody's season results and i've i've put in what our actual season results are so he gave dustin a b minus and had him going seven and six dustin actually went eight and five and made the playoffs 
So that was pretty close. Uh, he had Creamer going three and ten with a D. Creamer <laughs> went four and nine. So that was that was pretty close too. He's only one game off on each so far. And Creamer actually, he he looked like he was ready to to start rack, or rolling off some wins right there in midseason. He had he drafted Ezekiel Elliott, and Sean said it was a crazy pick, <laughs> two overall. Uh, the same with me. I took David Johnson, and me and Cream both didn't make the playoffs. But um, if you look just at overall player totals, um, <laughs> they are the top two running backs in the league. And not only that, if you look at every player in the league, all offense, there's only four players ahead of Ezekiel Elliott and David Johnson. Um, and those players are Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, and Drew Brees. So. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> So uh, that was, you know, good pick up, pickups. Like I said, I was looking to, dra- to grab uh, Johnson, and you got him right before me. But uh, So that was a good call in both of those. And actually, uh, I was kind of doubting Elliott, too, as a number two overall rookie, but fucking foot in my mouth, and dude's a beast. Well, I mean, I get, like the rookie, like I get that, but like, like just two years ago they had DeMarco Murray, who was the number one rushing, number right. one rushing you know? and then they had, like, Darren McFadden last year, and he didn't start until like October, and Darren McFadden's really not that great. He still put up like 1,100 yards. Yep. Um, so I had Ezekiel like better than McFadden, but probably below Murray two years ago. Mm-hmm. That's the case. He's definitely worth a top five pick, and actually he's on pace to uh, become pretty damn close to what Murray did. I think Murray had 1,800 rushing yards two years ago, but I don't know if he had quite the receiving yards that uh, Elliott has. But either way, Great pick by Cream. Um, yep. You know, too bad. You know, nothing else really worked out for him. All right. So he had you uh, drafting at an A minus. Had you ten and three. Uh, you went six and seven. Uh, and you know, I was looking at some of the the totals earlier. Uh, I know you had some key injuries too, but you were actually, I think, third overall in points, and yeah. missed out on the playoffs, which is crazy. Before last week, I was actually second overall. Um, <laughs> I, I believe going into the playoffs, I was—I think I was—I actually got up to second overall. Um, injuries bit me, and then there was a couple of games where I think Dustin barely beat me, uh, which was crucial because he—I think he came in third in our division behind you and Hayden. So he had the tiebreaker on me on that. So I had to basically win out like my last two or three games to have a shot, and I think I dropped. Uh, I think with two weeks to go, I think I dropped a game, and it that pretty much ended it uh, because you won too. Like I needed you to lose out, and Dustin to like lose two of his last three or something. Uh, I see. That didn't happen, so uh, yeah, I scored I guess the third highest points, but in the end, that really didn't mean nothing if you don't make the playoffs. So. Right, that's true. Uh, let's see. We're moving on. We had Nelson. Uh, Sean gave him a C minus at five and eight. Nelson went at four and nine. So again, not that bad, but it, uh, he's he's kind of in the same boat as you, where he scored the fifth most po- fifth most points and missed the playoffs. And I know at some at a certain point throughout the season, for a good while, he was like third in points even. Yeah, he kind of ran into my uh, my luck to where you would play somebody and you would you would have like the second or third highest points scored of the entire league, but yeah. the guy and. His guys go off and uh, edge you out. So, uh, and that actually happened a little bit, uh, a little bit more often to him. Like I remember, like the first few weeks of the season, he had the number two scoring team every week, and the guy he could play would have the number one scoring for the week. So he he got put into a pretty big hole, uh, kind of like I did early on. Uh, right. But uh, I mean, he he got there. Demarco Murray, I think, in the third round, which was a value pick. I mean, he's the third best running back in our league, I believe, behind the, yep, he's third with 483 points and 1,200 rushing yards, so it's not like he didn't draft good players, he just got a little bit unlucky, um, right, you know, and there's definitely a, there's some luck to it. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, he had uh, me at a B minus draft, had me going five and eight, I went nine and four, so you can suck my asshole, Sean. <laughs> Uh, he had Barnaby at a B minus going seven and six. Uh, B went eight and five. He made the playoffs again. He got eliminated by Hayden by seventeen points. Close game. Yeah, that 
was uh, B was my favorite to win other than myself during the season. Um, so it'll be interesting. Uh, B usually always has a pretty solid team. Last year he didn't, but he had a ton of injuries. But uh, he bounced back this year, and usually he's in the he's usually in the final four um, most years. So nice. All right, uh, Joey. He had at a D plus draft going three and ten. Uh, Joey actually picked up one more game than was predicted. Uh, but again, it's his first season. Like I said, it's a big learning curve. The, the thing with Joey is, I believe he st- I know he started out one and zero. I want to say he started out two and zero. Um, I can't remember though, but I know he beat me week one. Um, his mess up was trading Matt Ryan, and he kept Bortles because he was looking to move one of them. <laughs> and yeah. The thing is, is uh, Nelson actually wanted Bortles instead of Ryan. Um, <laughs> but if, if Joey had kept uh, Matty Ice, I, I really think he would have. Uh, he definitely wouldn't be in the second right now. So, All right. Learn. Yeah, that's that's part of it too. Is just learning player value through the year. Uh, yeah. So he had uh, Christian with a B plus draft, going eight and five. Christian went seven and six. Uh, he was number two last year, I think. Right? Yeah. He played you last year. He was. Uh, he got beat out in the championship, but again, he made the playoffs this year. So good He's on him. The hottest team going into uh, he, him and me were definitely the hottest teams going into the playoffs. Um, and uh, kind of like you, you know, he doesn't, he didn't have any keepers, but I mean, he annihilated his way to the uh, championship game. And uh, I had Julio go off, and that was a big reason why I was able to uh, to upset him. And I think he had uh, Amari Cooper last year too, and Amari Cooper broke his foot or something in, in like a Thursday night game, so he pretty much put up no points. Mm. Into the championship, and if you have one or two things like that happen, it can. Uh, can definitely break you. So, but another solid performance from Mr. Lopez. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Will he gave a C draft grade. Said he's gonna go five and eight. Will went nine and four. Ended up number two in the season. And uh, he was he was he was close to actually getting to the championship, uh, potentially. Um. He had Gronk go down. I really yeah. Thought, you know if he. Would have started Breeze and he had Gronk. I think he would have. Uh, that game would have been a lot closer. Yeah. You know, as you just completely destroyed him. What, did you have like hundred points? Yeah. Well, it was it was just over three hundred. Okay. But I had I had one guy that suffered an injury in the game. Ended up with no points either. Oh wow. Yeah. It could have been worse. Yeah. All right. He had Hayden uh, as his top dog. He had him at an A minus draft. He was. He said he was going to go 11 and two, uh, which he was very close to actually doing. I actually took that last game away from him at the uh, the end of the season there, the last game of the regular season. That was a close one that I pulled away. Um, he had himself as an A minus. Go ahead. What what was Hayes' record? 10 and three. Yeah, he went 10 and three. I went nine and four. That's right. Uh, he had himself as an A minus. He had himself going eight and five, and he went to an eleven. So, uh, I know you said you didn't really have time to play, but come on, man, two and eleven, you're better than that. He's he's embraced the curse. I mean, he realizes that there's nothing he can do. <laughs> um, he cursed Cam Newton. Uh, I did go back and watch a little bit of that episode. I would just skip through on YouTube, and I randomly went to a a segment where he was predicting, like you asked him who would be the best quarterback this year. He predicted Cam Newton. <laughs> um, he said your biggest reach was Jarvis Landry. Really? Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, the Shonster. Um, he's doing, he, I guess he's just so busy out in Dallas, man. And, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, moving to a different state, so I, 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 complete, I, I, I completely get it. Um, but uh, he better come with it this weekend and pay attention to his lineup. If he's got any inactives, um, you know, drop some players, add some new guys, and, and put up a fight versus Joey. So, um, Sean's pretty competitive, so I expect him to uh, go down swinging because uh, if he does lose and come, comes in last, he definitely doesn't <laughs> 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 it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. All right, uh, and the last guy we have was Matt. Uh, he had Mac, uh, a B draft grade going 6-7. and seven. He went 7-6. and six. Uh, I think he was close to making the playoffs, but 
I think he just missed out. Was uh, he came in fourth in the other division and had a winning record, and I believe it came down to him playing somebody the final weekend and somebody else playing somebody. He needed he needed to win, and the other person needed to lose, and he would have got in, but the cards didn't uh, fall that way. So. All right. That's that's similar to how I was last year right before the playoffs. So it's similar to how a lot of guys were last year right before the playoffs. Yeah, that's insane. We have, like, yeah. half the league going into the final week still, like, fighting for the playoffs. <laughs> but uh, we had, like, the two top guys, I think it was me and uh, Lopez. Uh, I believe it was me and Lopez had the best records, and then everybody else was just bunched up. Yep. So. All right, so uh, speaking of playoffs, uh, I'm just going to run through what we had this year real quick. Uh, Heaton and Will went one and two. They had the buys. Uh, and then it was me, du uh, Barnaby, Dustin, and Christian all made the playoffs. So congrats to all you guys. It doesn't mean a whole lot to make the playoffs uh, if you don't win, but, you know, that's it's something. Right. You had a chance to win it. You're right. Exactly. That's better than the, uh, the other six owners that didn't, so. Exactly. So uh, congrats to you guys. Um, and then it went uh, me taking down Christian and Barnaby taking down Dustin, and then Hayden beat Barnaby, and I beat Will. So, here we are, me and Hayden. Uh, so, what we're going to do now is take a look at that that matchup. We have uh, Perennial Powerhouse versus the talk show host. Um, we actually played twice this year already. Uh, in week two, Hayden beat me 235 to 175, and then uh, the last week... I beat him 265, 257. So this is going to be the rematch that decides everything uh, at the end of the year here. Um, and it's funny when you think about it too, uh, where both of us might not have even been playing at all this year because at the end of last year, Hayden was saying that he's not even going to participate this year. He was just going to be uh, a talk show host with me. Um <laughs> And I was damn close to the Sacco Bowl, not even. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, you, you just gotta you, you play, and if you play right, then you can get far, regardless of how what you did last year. Um, so looking at our matchup, let me pull it up real quick. Uh, we've got me. Okay, so my my big points are with uh, Aaron Rodgers, who's the number one quarterback this year, uh, who, however, is kind of hobbled. So that's no good. But I have uh, the number four running back in LaShawn McCoy, the number eight running back in Devonta Freeman. Those guys have been my core all year long. Everybody else except Jarvis Landry has come from the waiver wire. And I've had several guys come in and then leave and then more come in. So I've been running this uh, replacement scheme all season long, aside from those those four core guys. Uh, but Landry's been underperforming. He's only the number 14 guy right now. He doesn't have that many 100-yard games under his belt. However, the last two he does, and he's had a touchdown in both. Um, and then I picked up Ty Montgomery at one point several weeks ago. Yeah, and he, he has proven to be a monster when they actually play him. And at one point earlier in the year, he was actually coded as a wide receiver in NFL.com. So I was able to play him as a receiver to take up my weak receiver spots. And he's getting 100 rushing yards anyway. So uh, he was definitely a big pickup for me. I'm looking for him to go off again next week. Um and then I have a good defense was my, my secondary thing. I actually have every single defensive player I have is uh, within the top 15 of their category. Most of them are within top 10. So they, they've been actually doing a lot for me this year as well. Hayden on the other side has a monster receiving core. Uh, he has a number four quarterback in Andrew Luck, number 11 running back in Frank Gore, 
He's got the number one right wide receiver in Antonio Brown, number five receiver in T.Y. Hilton, and the number two receiver in, oh, fuck, what's his first name? Mike Evans. I believe Brown is actually second behind Julio, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, his, his receiving core is stacked. Um, you know, that's going to be the interesting thing is your running backs are stacked, and his running backs, I mean, I, I just, I'm not a believer in Frank Gore. He. He can be the number. He's somehow the eleventh best overall running back. But, um, that's what it's going to come down to: is, is your home run hitters at running back versus his receivers. Um, you know, uh, I, there's a couple changes I would make to your roster. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely in flux. I've I've made like okay. three changes um, so far. So your your roster here isn't set then, is what you're telling me? Yes. Your starting lineup. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's close, yeah. but it's definitely not 100%. Okay, yeah. Um, Jordan Reed is a, <laughs> said he did not practice and he got hurt and then thrown out of the uh, Monday night game. Um, I'm just reading right here. It's up in the air. He'll even suit up uh, against Chicago this week. So uh, that'll be a big blow if he doesn't have Jordan Reed. I mean, he's got Bennett on the bench. Um, but Bennett has been hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Some weeks he's been a focal point in the New England offense. Some weeks, like last week, he wasn't only at 35 yards. The week before that, he had 70 yards and touchdowns, um, double digit points. And then the two weeks before that, he had six points and 2.4 points. So it's just hit or miss. Um, that yeah, That's a big blow. If Jordan Reed can't go, um, that, that, that could, uh, that could come back to haunt him. Um, I'm looking at his flex, T. Williams, oh, Tyrell Williams for uh, San Diego. Uh, he's been hit or miss, too. Um, he's a rookie, and he got kind of thrust into being their number one receiver when uh, my boy Keenan Allen got hurt week one. And then I think they had another, another injury in their receiving core as well. So, uh Projected points has got you 176, and he's at 187, so it's projected to be close. Um, I'm going to say it's going to come down to Jordan Reed. If he plays, Hayden, if he plays, Hayden should have the edge. Um, uh, but if he doesn't, uh, I think you can steal it. That's what I'm hoping for. And as of right now, it's up in the air according to uh, according to 3 o'clock this afternoon on uh, RotoWorld.com, so... Well, uh, obviously, I'm I'm picking myself to win. Um, I'm high as shit off of that 300 plus performance last week. I'm yeah. I'm hoping to see the same thing again this week. Uh, but what about you? What's your What's your final prediction? Who's Who's taking it this year? All right. So whether or not Jordan Reed plays, if I had to pick Andrew Luck at Oakland, that's a terrible matchup. Aaron Rodgers versus Minnesota. Minnesota's got a good defense, but Aaron Rodgers is at home, and he has to win the next two games to go to get in the playoffs because he's already he's a game behind Detroit, and I believe Detroit's already beat him, which they play each other week 16, so it could come down to that um, week 17. So Aaron Rodgers has got a lot to play for. He's at home. <sighs> you're running back your style. Damn, you're. I mean, Landry's legit, but yeah. Uh, I would just, you've got some people on your bench. I would just say they're <laughs> fucking out in your other two receivers. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, or at least one. Um, yeah. Uh, I would, but, uh, it's really hard to pick against Hayden because he's just been so consistent all year. But, uh, let me look at your defense. Defense is pretty easy. Kickers are pretty Prater versus Kostowski. Um, the year of the upset, you're going to pull it off. Yeah, baby. Landry's going to have another 100 yard game. All your running backs are going to go off. And I actually think Luck is going to struggle at Oakland. Um, I just hope Oakland doesn't blow him out. And if, if Luck has garbage time, he'll hit a bonus. But um, if it's a close game, He's on the road. He's 
said he's limited in practice. He's banged up. Uh, Frank Gore didn't practice today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say his uh, his Indianapolis Colts are going to struggle at Oakland tonight. You're going you're gonna to pull off the upset. You're going to join uh, the uh, the small group of champions. I love it. I love it. I'm <laughs> I'm so ready for for Saturday. Get to win that oh my god, you have no idea how bad I want that fucking thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, oh, I can't wait. That bad boy, that's gonna be right here. I will pay for the shipping, it's gonna go right behind me on the wall. <laughs> uh, did you mention. Oh, uh, so Hayden and I actually got together. We were talking about uh, the money for this year. It's $240 total uh, prize pool. We decided that we're going to do a 50-50 split, so we each get 120 of it. Um, we're actually going to play for the belt, for the championship, for the belt. Uh, and if I win, I would also get a keeper out of it. So uh, the money has already been decided there. However... That's completely secondary for me. I want that damn belt. Yeah. Um, it should be, like, the fact that it's predicted to be so close is encouraging. And then looking at his matchups at quarterback, um, which, I mean, A-Rod's banged up, too, and Minnesota's no joke. But uh, Luck just carved up Minnesota. Yeah. So, and A-Rod's at home, so... Uh, I'm thinking, A-Rod, I think she should have the edge there. So, uh, yeah, I'm rolling with you, and uh, you know, I'll maybe ship in the belt up to New York, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll, be, you'll be granted a keeper next year. The interesting thing is, who would you keep? My guess is McCoy. That's, um, yeah, that's that's tough. McCoy, that's a tough call between those three. Yeah, you big three, so. Yep. But, yeah, no, I'm I'm – absolutely stoked at that that prospect but uh i think that's that's all i have for now um just looking forward to this weekend finding out whether or not uh that thing's going to be coming my way uh good luck to you hayden sir uh i hope the fucking hell you lose though <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be crazy because we've got so many games Saturday, and then there's three national games Sunday, which is Christmas, and then there's a Monday night game. So uh, I'm sure you guys are going to be constantly on your phones checking and getting updates throughout the weekend. So. Well, all of, let's see, uh, just about every single one of my players plays Saturday. I have two defensive players that play, three def defense that play tonight, and then oh, so everything so else is Saturday for me. Yeah completely done Saturday so we'll if you're ahead Saturday then it, then you know it'll be an elbow but if if he's ahead after Saturday yeah that's pretty much a wrap right? yep uh he's got Antonio Brown on Sunday and Prater on Monday um again I would strongly look at your receivers uh no 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 I, I have I have I've been looking uh you got, you got Cole Beasley playing Monday night and, uh, uh against Detroit I don't know how that's gonna shape out you got uh uh, the uh, New York receiver playing against us um, Saturday. So you got Willie Sneed. I mean, there's there's two or three receivers there that I would actually prefer over uh, one or two guys you currently have in the lineup. But, yeah. No, I definitely – I've I've been switching out uh, Thielen with uh, with Sneed. I did it like three times already. But um, it's – it's Thielen's home run or miss. He's exactly. Exactly. Or do nothing. That's uh, yeah. That's the yeah. That was that was the guy that I had last week that did nothing because he got hurt. He had zero uh, points last that. week. So yeah, that's that's probably gonna end up changing. Um, like I said, I've been looking through everything and uh, changing it multiple times. So I'm looking at Hayden's bench. He's got Deion Lewis for the set in New York. Um, he's got Bennett he can throw in for. Uh, for, for Reed. So, yeah, either way, no matter what you guys decide to do, if someone is, on, is, is inactive, you guys have good reserves to throw in there. So, uh, right. It, yeah, it should be a close, exciting matchup, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you pull it out. If not, the, uh, the evil reign of me and Hayden. <laughs> hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm breaking the wall down, Mr. Gorbachev. Taking it down. 
All right, man. Uh, it's been awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, I can't wait for this weekend, and uh, I'll definitely do a postseason episode too. Either way. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Fourth, be with you. All right, guys. Peace.